In this Baldur's Gate 3 video, we're going to talk about the most powerful feat combinations. Whether you want to beat the game on tactician difficulty, or you just want to make your characters as powerful as possible, these are the most powerful combos I've seen. So Tavern Brawler is actually pretty crazy. When you make an unarmed attack, use an improvised weapon or throw something, your strength modifier is added twice to the damage and attack rolls. You also get plus one strength or constitution. Now this is especially strong on a monk with barbarian subclass. With Barbarian 1 and Monk 5, the base unarmed damage will deal 1d6 plus 8 with a bonus to hit of plus 11, three times per turn or four if you use Flurry of Blows. Later on, the base unarmed damage of a 11 Monk and 1 Barbarian becomes 1d8 plus 10 with a bonus to hit of plus 14. Now arguably even better is how Karlak can make great use of this, or really any Barbarian when using thrown weapons such as Javelins, Spears, or or tridents. Now if you choose this feat as a barbarian and you get Nairulna and Ring of Flinging along with Gloves of Uninhibited Kushigo specifically, then you've got a very overpowered throwing setup. I highly recommend you give that a try. You're basically going to be able to throw, throw, throw non-stop and it's very, very much overpowered. All right, coming in at number two, we have Sharpshooter plus Lucky slash Gloom Stalker. So Sharpshooter feat says your ranged weapon attacks do not receive penalties from high ground rules. However, even better, it says that ranged weapon attacks with weapons you are proficient with have a minus five penalty to their attack roll, but deal an additional 10 damage. You can toggle this on or off. Now the Sharpshooter feature that adds plus 10 damage works on both hands when dual wield one hand crossbows, making it extremely effective when dual wielding. It's hard to express how much damage can really be done with this, so I'd highly recommend giving it a try and experiencing how overpowered this really is yourself. You can make up to three attacks in one turn, dealing more than 50 damage even at low levels. To counter the minus five attack roll penalty, you can pair this with the lucky feat, which allows you to reactively re-roll when you would have missed up to three times per long rest. This activates only when you miss, so it's pretty amazing. You can also help your attack rolls with Bless and also respec Asterion to Gloom Stalker, picking up Archery Fighting Style and Extra Attack. With all this, you can get your Sharpshooter character to be a literal machine gun firing off five attacks around. And what's also great about this combo is that hand crossbows are considered light, so you don't need the dual wield feet in order to use them. All right, coming in at number three, we have Sentinel plus Polearm Master plus Great Weapon Master. Now, this is one of my absolute favorites. Sentinel reads when an enemy within melee range attacks an ally you can use a reaction to make a weapon attack against that enemy. You gain advantage on opportunity attacks, and when you hit a creature with an opportunity attack, it can no longer move for the rest of its turn. And this goes great with Polearm Master, which reads, when attacking with a glaive, halberd, quarterstaff, or spear, you can use a bonus action to attack with the butt of your weapon. You can also make an opportunity attack when a target comes within range. This means that when using a reach weapon, if someone enters your attack range, which is 10 feet, you get an attack of opportunity, and if you hit them, then Sentinel will stop their movements. This means that if they are not using a reach weapon, they won't be able to move into range to even attack you, which is so powerful. And this is really great for putting this character up in the front lines to really defend your entire back line so that melee characters can't even reach you and it can't reach anyone behind you. If you add in Great Weapon Master, which reads when you land a critical hit or kill a target with a melee weapon attack, you can make another melee weapon attack as a bonus action that turn. Attacks with heavy melee weapons you are proficient in can deal 10 additional damage at the cost of a minus five attack roll penalty. Now you might be wondering, all of these sound so good, but which one should you get first? Well, Sentinel is great by itself because it protects your back line so much, but I'd say Polearm Master first because it's a very reliable feat and will get a lot of use even without Sentinel. Now, when you add Great Weapon Master to this combo, you'll have an incredibly strong feat combination. Classes like Fighter, Paladin, and Barbarian would be great picks for this feat combo. I like Paladin in particular because they can use Smite on both the bonus action and opportunity attack given from Polearm Master, giving you more opportunities to crit Smite. All right, moving on to number four. We have Alert plus Resilient Constitution plus Elemental Adept. Now this is a combo I really like for spellcasters. Alert grants a plus five bonus to initiative and can't be surprised.
surprised. This is perfect for a class that can throw down a massive crowd control spell to control a fight, a spell like Hypnotic Pattern or Hunger of Hadar, and a group of enemies to start a fight can be incredibly powerful and a huge advantage for you and your party. Resilient increases an ability by 1 to a max of 20 and grants proficiency in that ability saving throws. By choosing Constitution, you gain proficiency in Constitution saving throws. The reason this is perfect for a spellcaster is because whenever you take damage while you are concentrating on a spell, you must make a Constitution saving throw to maintain your concentration. So Resilient Constitution is incredibly strong on any caster that uses concentration spells. Proficiency in concentration saves makes it much more likely for you to maintain concentration on a spell when taking damage, which saves you from having to recast a certain spell that requires concentration and use up another spell slot when casting. This can be very useful for classes like Warlocks, who don't want to lose concentration on Hex or Hunger of Hadar, Clerics who don't want to lose concentration on Bless, Spirit Guardians or other powerful concentration spells, and other classes with concentration. Proficiency in saving throws just means a bonus to associated roles, making you more likely to succeed. You can either add on top of that or choose alternatively the feat called War Caster, which gives you advantage on saving throws to maintain concentration, as well as a reaction to cast Shocking Grasp at a target moving out of melee range, which I figure might not be happening that often. Now, advantage makes you more likely to succeed by rolling two dice and using the higher value. If you were to compare War Caster to Resilient Constitution, I would say that early game War Caster is better, but late game it swaps. So you could also just get both for your spellcaster, but if you're just going to choose one, maybe just go with War Caster, depending on if you're lower level and if you're higher level, go with Resilient Constitution. Now, the third feat that is also perfect for a spellcaster is Elemental Adept. This feat causes your spells to ignore resistance to a damage type of your choice. When you cast spells of that type, you cannot roll a one. You can then choose Acid, Cold, Fire, Lightning, or Thunder. Now, this is an incredibly powerful feat for a spellcaster, allowing you to dramatically increase the minimum damage of your spells. Since you can't roll a one, the more dice that are rolled, the higher the minimum damage is increased on a spell. For example, Fireball is 8d6 fire damage or 8 to 48 damage, but with Elemental Adept Fire, it becomes 16 to 48 damage. Now, I think that is a massive increase, and these three feats are great for most spellcasters. Now, even if you don't get all three in combination, I think individually, these are all super strong feats that are very appealing for any type of spellcaster. All right, let's move on to number five, Magic Initiate Druid plus Life Cleric. Now, Magic Initiate Druid allows you to learn two cantrips and a level one spell from the Druid spell list. You can cast the level one spell once per long rest, and your spellcasting ability for all three spells is weak. Wisdom. This is great for a life cleric because the Disciple of Life subclass feature grants increased healing on each good berry. So instead of 1d4 for each berry, it's 1d4 plus 3. So this is probably the best way to get health back outside of combat other than a short rest. This feat is also great for clerics because you can pick up Shillelagh, which causes your staff or club to become magical and use your spellcasting ability for attack rolls. Since wisdom is what clerics use for attack rolls, not only are you going to be able to cast druid spells effectively, this also allows you to use wisdom for your melee attack rolls, making your melee attacks hit much more often than they would be otherwise. This means you can focus entirely on increasing wisdom for improved spell casting and still be able to melee hit. So I think this is a great combination for a cleric. And finally, coming in at number six, we have athlete plus mobile. With 50% more jump distance and the ability to move after making a melee attack and not provoke opportunity attacks, you can effectively effectively outmaneuver your enemies. Using a hit and run strategy, you can attack and then jump away out of their movement range. This is most effective on enemies with low mobility, weaker ranged attacks, or enemies with only melee attacks. Not to mention with athlete, you also get plus one strength or dexterity as well on top. And that's my list. Do you know of a combo not in this list that's really strong? Let me know in the comments below and let me know if I missed anything from this list. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.